So there's been a lot of reports about the hostage negotiations between Israel and Hamas in the last several days. Egypt is starting to broker new deals. There's new offers being proposed. What is being negotiated? What is on the table? Let's make some order. On April 13th, after after several weeks of negotiations, Hamas rejected the compromise deal that was reached between the negotiators, that is Israel, the United States, Egypt, and Qatar. Hamas presented its own counteroffer, which was a three-stage plan that would culminate with the idea of withdrawal and a complete ceasefire in the war. Israel said that as a non-starter, was not willing to even negotiate that, and negotiations broke down. Since then, the Israeli war cabinet stated that it is going to come up with new ways to apply pressure on Hamas, and among others, in the last several weeks, there have been a lot of buildings up about Israel's invasion of Rafah, that is the last stronghold of Hamas in the Gaza Strip, the most southern city that is adjacent to Egypt. According to reports, Israel has been drafting military reserve units and has already amassed armored divisions down south and is already also preparing different tent ten cities in the Gaza Strip in order to evacuate the civilians from Rafah and plan the invasion. Seemingly in light of this and Egypt's fears of this invasion, Egypt has taken up the role of negotiator instead of Qatar. Both Israel Israel and the United States have been frustrated with the fact that Qatar did not, according to them, apply enough pressure on Hamas to reach a deal, and now Egypt is taking a more active role. In the negotiations between Israel and Egypt, there are two deals that are currently being debated. One is a much larger one that includes an ultimate end of the war. One is a much shorter one for a more low-scale deal. Starting with the larger one, on Wednesday, April 24th, there was a meeting between the IDF Chief of Staff Herzi Alevi and the head of the Shabak Ronen Bar, along with the Egyptian Head of Intelligence Abbas Kamel. Kamel reportedly presented this new deal that he would like to put forth. According to reports, the deal includes three stages. In the first one, Israel will agree to publicly halt all its plans for invading the town of Rafah. Ka- Abbas Kamel reiterated that it is not only Egypt, but also the United States and the EU that are deeply concerned about this looming IDF invasion. In the second stage, there will be release of all Israeli hostages in two different phases. They will be 10 weeks apart, all while a ceasefire is in effect. The number of hostages that will be released is not given. According to some speculation, Abbas Kamel does not know how many hostages are alive, how many Hamas can quote-unquote deliver. With regards to the release of Palestinian prisoners in exchange, a separate report noted that Hamas would demand 50 Palestinian prisoners for each kidnapped soldier and 30 prisoners for each kidnapped civilian. Importantly, that report did not relate to the quote-unquote heavy prisoners. Those are prisoners that are either sentenced to life in jail for murdering Israelis or the leaders of the different terror organizations. This is one of the sticking points that caused the breakdown in negotiations in the previous round. Hamas was demanding a lot of these quote-unquote heavy prisoners, and Israel was saying the number of them has to be much less. In the third phase of the deal, according to Kamel, there will be a complete ceasefire that will be declared between the sides, but it will be limited to one year. Both Israel and Hamas will oblige to not fire at each other in any way. During that ceasefire, concrete steps to establishing a Palestinian state will be declared in cooperation with the United States, Egypt, Jordan, and the Palestinian Authority. According to reports, the Israeli side to those talks did not respond and agreed to continue negotiations. So that is the larger deal that is currently being negotiated, this three-phase plan that will bring an ultimate one-year ceasefire with an attempt to then create a Palestinian state or at least lay the foundation during that year. Separately to that, on Friday, April 26, an Egyptian delegation arrived in Israel in order to continue negotiations. The Israeli War Cabinet approved for the Israeli negotiating team to try to negotiate a smaller scale deal, but also to be more flexible on certain aspects of the deal. The, the deals that were discussed in the previous rounds that were some of the sticking points that made the negotiations fail. According to what has been published, Israel will be willing to negotiate a deal involving the release of 33 hostages that fit the quote-unquote humanitarian category, that is women, elderly people, sick and injured who are held in the Gaza Strip. In this, Israel is tacitly accepting that Hamas may not have 40 live hostages that fit this category. In the previous rounds, Israel was demanding that Hamas deliver the 40 hostages that Israel say fit that category. Hamas said it could not deliver 40, and Israel said then the negotiations are going to break down. Now Israel seems tacitly accepting that Hamas may not have 40 live hostages that meet that category. Israel is reportedly insisting that female IDF soldiers be counted as women rather than soldiers that are held in captivity, and is also insisting that the length of the truce be shorter than originally was being negotiated, as there are fewer hostages that will be released in this humanitarian exchange. In turn, Israel is willing to be a lot more flexible on the movement of Palestinian civilians to the northern parts of the Gaza Strip, and is also willing to negotiate a redeployment of the IDF in the Nitzarim Corridor. This is the corridor that the IDF is maintaining that effectively divides 
divides the Gaza Strip from the northern parts of the Strip to the southern parts of the Strip and ensures that Palestinians cannot return north unless they pass through IDF checkpoints. This is one of the things that Israel said it was not willing to give up. Hamas insisted that Israel completely allow freedom of movement of Palestinians in the northern parts of the Strip. According to reports, at least now, Israel is willing to negotiate that facet within a smaller scale hostage exchange. According to reports from the negotiations, the Egyptian news site al Kahara al-Habaria reported substantial movement and coming together of the positions between the delegations. Israeli news sites also reported that the negotiations were very good, in good spirits and to the point, and advances were made in all parameters. Israeli sources also added, and I quote, The Egyptians are showing a lot of willingness to apply pressure on Hamas and advance a deal against the backdrop of Israeli willingness to continue advancing the Rafah Rafah operation. At the same time, however, alongside these more optimistic reports, Wall Street Journal quoted the Egyptian sources today stating that they are not optimistic about the current round of negotiations, and instead that Egypt is simply hoping to buy time and stall the Rafah invasion in order to give the United States and other actors enough time to pressure Israel to not carry out a full-scale invasion. That is where things are right now. I will say in a moment of analysis that it seems highly unlikely at this point that the larger deal has any chance of coming to fruition. First, it's important to note that these negotiations are being held between Egyptian and Israeli delegations. Hamas itself is not represented in the negotiations. Hamas has announced that it received the Israeli proposal and is studying it. However, all the advances that were made and the optimism that is being reported is being reported as advances between the Israeli delegation and the Egyptian delegation. In other words, saying Egypt is being optimistic that it is getting something that it will be able to sell to Hamas, but it's not actually advances that are, that are being done with the Hamas negotiating team. Right now, it remains to be seen how Hamas feels about the current negotiations and these advances. Second, both Israel and Hamas have presented positions that seem to ultimately lead to a stalemate. Israel has repeatedly stated that it will not accept a ceasefire, and the Israeli Prime Minister Netanyahu's government would also be in danger of falling if Israel would in fact go for an ultimate ceasefire. At the same time, Hamas has rejected all deals, stating that it will only accept a deal that ends in in a ceasefire and an ultimate idea of withdrawal from the Gaza Strip. That is seemingly the reason that Egypt is currently proposing a one-year ceasefire as an attempt to satisfy all sides, on the one hand giving Hamas the possibility of saying it achieved its ceasefire, on the other hand giving Israel its uh, uh, possibility of saying that in fact it has not agreed to an ultimate ceasefire. However, at this point it is highly unlikely that either side is going to agree to that. In turn, Hamas does have a vested interest in stalling the IDF invasion of Rafah at this point. Due to that, it is likely that Hamas is going to try to prolong the negotiations, possibly say that it says see some merit in the current proposals, there is what to talk about just to try to stall and also delay the invasion. It is also even possible that given the Egyptian pressure, Hamas may accept this shorter term deal in order to again forestall the Rafah invasion for a while, however again, it's important to know that Hamas thus far has rejected all of the proposals that do not end in an ultimate ceasefire and IDF withdrawal from the Gaza Strip. If you want to learn more about the Israel-Hamas war, check out my channel. I upload daily summaries about the war and a lot of other information and details regarding the ongoing developments. I'm Alon Burstein. I'm a visiting assistant professor and an Israel Institute fellow at the Department of Political Science at the University of California, Irvine. Thanks for watching.